Gent Arthur Lowe, John LeMessure and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> All is safely gathered in. Featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender with this week's guests, Bill Pertwee, Frank Williams and Nan Kenware. Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. As the summer of 1941 mellows into autumn, Hitler is locked in deadly combat with the Russian bear. Meanwhile, in Africa and the Middle East, the brave allies inflict heavy losses on the Axis powers. And in Britain, the home guard, those tireless guardians of our island freedom, remain ever vigilant. In Captain Mannering's office at the church hall in Warmington-on-Sea, Private Godfrey is waiting rather anxiously to go. <laughs> It's most unusual for Mr. Manry and Mr. Wilson to be late. Don't you worry, Mr. Godfrey. They must have been held up. But my bus leaves at ten past, Mr. Jones. Uh, they won't hold it for you these days. Can you get out of the way, Pike? Well, mind you, don't bump it, Mr. Manry. Don't be silly, Pike. It's not a baby. It's a Tommy John. Oh, Mr. Manry, sir, Mr. Godfrey here would like permission to be excused. Not to... now, Jones. No, no. Go, go and fall the men in. I have important news for them. Well, well, if he doesn't go now, Mr. Manning, it might be too late. Then tell him to go now and get back on parade as fast as he can. Right, sir, right, sir. Ah, oh, there we are. Oh, isn't it a smashing gun, Mr. Manning, eh? <laughs> you dirty rat, you... Ah! Wait, put that Tommy gun down at once. Yes, Mr. Yes, Mr. Manning, I'm sorry. I carried it here and I'm going to handle it first. Ah, yes. Beautifully balanced. Devastating weapon in the right hands. I should think it was even more devastating in the wrong hands. <laughs> you stop doing that, Pike. I'm sorry, Mr. Manning. I'm sorry. Well, we'll go and show this to the troops. Bring the mags, Wilson. I said. Let me carry it, Mr. Manning. Please, please let me carry it. Pike, I've got Go and fall in. Yes, Mr. Manning. Wilson, you must control that boy. Yes, I know, sir. Thinks it's a game. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, I pay attention, men. Now, I know you've all been waiting for it. So here it is. <laughs> Our Thompson submachine gun. Known in military circles as the Tommy gun. Oh. Now, this is one of the most sophisticated weapons ever produced. It fires 650 rounds of .45 ammunition per minute. The drum magazine holds 50... You've got the drum, Wilson? Oh, yes, sir. Well, hold it up, then. Right, I said to say, yes, yes. The magazine, everyone. <laughs> there are. Sergeant Wilson's holding up the drum. The clip-on magazine, known as the box, holds 20 rounds. Show the clip, Wilson. Oh, I suppose it is. Good. There's the clip. <laughs> See it? Excuse me, sir, for a bayonet. No, I'm afraid not, Jones. Oh, pity. Mr. Manreen, Mr. who's going to have the Tommy gun? Please, may I have it? Please, may I have it? Certainly Tommy not. Oh, excuse me, Captain Manreen. Not you either, Godfrey. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, we ought to take it in turns. General McCulley always used to say, take it in turns. Who was General McCulley? <laughs> well, he wasn't very important. He just used to say, take it in turns. <laughs> That's about all I remember of him, really. We, we could have a first drive, sir. Why not? I should first go. No, certainly not. I will not have the tactical future of this platoon decided on the turn of a car. We shall draw lots. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Mannering. I'm sorry, Godfrey. I know you're disappointed. But I'm only trying to do the fair thing. May I have three days' holiday? I beg your pardon? I'd rather like three days' holiday. You've gone out of your mind, Godfrey. Hitler is ready to bounce across the channel, <laughs> and we're here in the front line. I wouldn't ask normally, but it's because of this friend of mine. Oh, yes. It's all very involved. Yes, I'm sure it must be. Uh, permission to interfere, sir. <laughs> Mr. Godfrey won't speak up for himself, so he's too much the gentleman, but my lips are not sealed. I can reveal that at the bottom of all this, sir, there is a woman... It's true, Godfrey. Uh, yes, sir. I think you'd better come with me into the office. Uh, yes, sir. You know, that Godfrey, he's a fey look in his eye. More likely than not, he's a sex maniac. <laughs> Can I look after the Tommy gun for you, Mr. Manning, oh, please? Oh, very well. There you are. Thank you. It's also called the Chicago Piano. <laughs> what did you say? The Tommy gun. 
It's called the Chicago Piano. Anyway, that's what James Cagney always calls it. You stupid boy. Godfrey, come along. Uh, coming, sir. You too, Wilson. All right, sir. Close the door, Godfrey. Yes, sir. And Wilson. Mm -hmm. You better take some notes. Yes, certainly, sir. Yes, right. Now, Godfrey. Yeah, just a minute. What are you doing here, Jones? Well, it's like this, sir. Mr. Godfrey here is a very retiring man, and he won't stand up for himself. I would like to speak for him, sir, because I have been privy to his intimate details through things he has told me in consonants. <laughs> is that all right with you, Godfrey? Well, I, I thank suppose Thank you, thank so. you, Mr. Godfrey, thank you. Well, sir, it all started to commence just before the ball ball. Mr. Godfrey here was a dandy young buck with some 20 summers. Mr. Williams, I'm sorry about that. I, I didn't quite catch that. Dandy. Oh, 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 dandy. <laughs> Right. Anyway, Mr. Godfrey, he lost his heart to a young lady who was in service in a great house nearby. Y you listening, Mr. Godfrey? Yes, of course, Sam. Very little choice. Mm. <laughs> now, in those days, Mr. Manning, it wasn't like these days, you know. If you was a serving wench, you had to know your place and mind your peas and onions. <laughs> you worked from 5.30 in the morning, black in the grate, to half past eight at night, putting the cat out. <laughs> you had one Sunday off a month. And they give you three and six a week less laundry. But it was a good life. <laughs> I, I can't sit here listening to all this rigmarole. No, oh, sorry, Mr. Manning, I was digressing. Now, seeing as so little, Mr. Godfrey never had a chance to plight his trough, which he would have done, given half a chance, him being a very virile young man, <laughs> as we all was in them days, <laughs> me more than most. <laughs> You're not in an area, are you, Mr. Yes, Manning? I am. Get to the point. <laughs> Well, he wants three days' holiday, that's the point. Well, I'm perfectly well aware of that. Look, Jones, please be quiet, will you? Let Godfrey speak for himself. No, yeah, you see, he won't listen. I don't know why I bothered to Be try. quiet, Jones. Now, Godfrey. Well, I, I wanted three days' holiday to help with the harvest. Well, that's hardly a holiday. It's very important work, isn't it, Wilson? Of course it is indeed, sir. Very important, sir. But I'm afraid I, I didn't get down all of what Jones has said. You see, he went awfully fast. I've only got as far as serving wench, mining her peas and things. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't worry about that. Onions. I don't think it had anything to do with the matter in hand anyway. Right. Oh, yes, it did. That serving wench married a farmer, and now she's a widow, and it's her harvest he wants to help with. <laughs> her farmer has gone to hospital. Yes, yeah, not operation for hernia. But... <laughs> hernia, did you say? Yes, left side. Thank you, Mr. Left, left side. No, don't right. bother with all that. <laughs> Look, Godfrey, does she have any other help? Only a couple of land girls, sir. I... I'd like to have helped her. How many acres does she farm? Well, I think there's about a hundred acres of wheat to get in. This is vital, Wilson. England needs every grain of corn she can grow. Yep. We'll call for volunteers from the platoon, and Jones will drive us there in the van. Yeah, yeah, I see Mr. Godfrey. He wants me now. Two minutes ago, he was casting me off like an old acquaintance. Yeah, come along, Jones. <laughs> get yeah. the men on parade. Right, sir, right, sir. It's most kind of you, Captain Manrick. Oh, you think I might phone Mrs. Pritchett and give her the good news? Yes, of course you can, Godfrey, yes. Oh, yes. Right, Wilson, get the nominal roll, tick off all the volunteers. All right, sir. That harvest is top priority, and we are going to see that it is all safely gathered in. Creatures great and small Wise and wonderful. Is that you, Vicar? Yes. Who is it? It's me, Warden Hodges. Sorry to disturb you. Oh, that's all right. I only came in for a quick burst on the organ. <laughs> I must talk to you, Vicar. I gather you had a narrow escape last night. Narrow escape? It was a miracle. The bomb landed right beside me. If it had gone off, I wouldn't be here to talk to you now. A miracle indeed. It knocked my pint of beer right clear out of my hand. <laughs> Just left me holding the handle. Oh, it was a deliverance. God moves in a mysterious way his wonders to perform. Oh, I should have been killed, but I was spared. Here, yeah, why me? Answer me that. Why me? Why? Why me? Why? 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 I can't possibly think. <laughs> I'm just a simple greengrocer. Here, yeah, do you think he's saving me for some great purpose? Yes, well, you never know. 
all my life I've, I've been rotten, but I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm going to stop giving short weight and hiding my rotten tomatoes behind the good ones. <laughs> yeah, is that what you do? Uh, and I'm going to scrape the soil off my potatoes so that people get all, all potatoes and not half the weight in mud. <laughs> and I'm going to try and keep my fingernails clean. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to be kind to everyone and I'm going to love my enemies. Not Hitler, of course. But I'm going to be good to Captain Mannering, and I'm going to help him with his struggle, because he's a good man at arts, you know. Well, if you say so. Well, from now on, I'm going to be right behind him. Well, that's marvellous news. Oh, thank you, Vicar, for seeing me. Oh, I, I needed your guidance. I'm only too glad to help. Oh, you've been a rock for me to cling to, you have a rock, a rock, you have. Yes, pleasure, I'm sure. <laughs> now, if you'll excuse me, I must just brush up my arpeggios. <laughs> Isn't it exciting being on a farm, Mr. Fraser? <laughs> Not really. Hey, hey, do you think they'll let me milk those cows later on? We shouldn't think so, son. Why not? Because those cows are bulls. <laughs> right, men, into the barn. Stick your kid in the corner by that old yes. tractor. Right. Hang on to your rifles. We don't want to be surprised. Well, they won't surprise me, Mr. Manning. I've got my Tommy gun. I'll, I'll, I'll fill them full of lead. <laughs> How did that boy get hold of that thing? Fraser took first term. But well, I think Frank made some private arrangements. I will not have private arrangements made on active service. Oh, good morning. Good morning, gentlemen. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Prentice. <laughs> this is very kind of you, Colonel Mannering. Not at all. I'm sorry these quarters are a bit rough and ready for you, Colonel Mannering. That's quite all right, madam. All we're concerned with is gathering in the harvest. We've got a bit of a problem there. Mr. Yates of Grove Farm was going to thresh it for me, but his thresher's broke, so he's all behind, see? Well, don't you have one yourself, Mrs. Prentice? Oh, I have one all right, but only my foreman knows how it works. Yes, well, I'm sure we've enough expertise in our ranks to get the wheels turning, don't you think, Wilson? Mm, I really don't know, frankly. I mean, the farming machinery looks so complicated. Oh, well, it's certainly beyond me. Don't worry, Mrs. Prentice. We'll win through. Rely on us. Hey, pride! Hey, pride! Hey, pride! Hey, pride! Hey, pride! Halt! Oh, that was lovely. Absolutely lovely. What on earth is that? It's that awful fellow Hodges. Oh, what in heaven's name is he doing here? Oh, Captain Mannering, the warranty on sea wardens are here to give you help. I don't think we need them. Do we, Wilson? No, I, I suggest you just clear off. Yeah, clear off or I'll drill you full of holes. Ah! Hi, hi! Back! <laughs> How many times must I tell you? Put that gun down. Oh. Don't send me away, Captain Mannering. Don't spur me in England's hour of need. We're standing shoulder to shoulder against the common foe. Let them all come, Captain Mannering, and you and I will shock them. <laughs> I see. Wilson, does this man drink at all? Well, he, he did that time on the end of the pier. <laughs> Better watch him. Yes, he might. He's up to something. Right, men. Fall in outside in three ranks. That's right. Fall in outside. You do as the good captain says. He's a good man. Fall in outside. Here, yeah, here. Yeah. I'm supposed to do all the bawling and shouting and that sort of thing. Oh, sorry, Corporal Jones. Really, I wouldn't do anything to hurt your feelings. I'm just trying to support the good captain. Yeah, would you leave me to do the supporting and the shouting? Well, maybe Hodges has been drinking. Hmm. Come on. Better go and look at this thresher. Right. Don't buy the left. Quick. Oh, left, right, right. left. left. Right, left, 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 Fall out, gather round the threshing machine. Right, wardens, fall out, gather round the threshing machine like the good captain says. Well, Wilson, this is it. Yes, sir. It's very interesting. No, I don't suppose it's as complicated as it looks. Oh, no, 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 I'm sure it isn't. Just select however many men you need. Show them how it works. But I don't know how it works. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, why should I know how it works? Oh. <clears throat> what about you, Fraser? Sir? You come from farming stock, don't you? I do that, sir. My father was a farmer. Well, you should know how a threshing machine works. He was a sheep farmer. 
You did it thrash sheep, very foolish. Yeah, all right, all right. All right. No need to be aggressive. Excuse me, Captain Manry, no, I think I know how it works. Oh, good, good. Well done, Jones. Yes. Now, pay attention, everybody. Aye, sir. Jones knows how it works. Aye, Carry on, Jones. Thank you, sir. Now then, this part here is the steam engine, what does the driving. And this complication here is the threshing thing, what does the threshing. I'm not getting too technical for them, am no, I? No, no, I don't think so, right, Well, you toss the stooks of wheat into this big funnel-shaped thing there. That's what they call the opera. Then the engine goes puff, 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 And the fessing thing goes jibber, 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 jibber. <laughs> and while it's going jibber, 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 it masses all the wheat up, you see, and the straw goes whoops-a-daisy, whoops-a-daisy, all along the conveyor belt. In the meanwhile, the grain comes wheel, 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 all through the tubes at the other end and goes whoosh, 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 whoosh into them sacks, and then it's all done. Yes. <laughs> well, I think we've got the gist of what Jones was saying, haven't we? Puff, 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 jibber, 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 whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. A lot of rubbish. <laughs> right, Jones's section will run the threshing operation here, and the rest of you get on to reaping and gathering. What shall I do, Captain Mannering? Just keep quiet. Oh, yes, Captain Mannering. Now, I need someone up there on the platform above the hopper to load the wheat from the cart. I'd like to volunteer to be the someone up there on that platform above the hopper. Good man, Joe. Sure. You help him, Pike. Yeah, and I'll keep everyone covered as well. Uh, Pike! <laughs> Don't you repeat it about that gun. Put that gun down. Oh, Captain Mandry, uh, I usually supervise the grain going into the sacks. Do you? Well, you do that, don't yes. you? Now, there's the engine to get going. Would you be any good at that, uh, Wilson? Mum says Uncle Arthur can't even use a chin opening, doesn't she, Uncle Arthur? <laughs> I don't think that's awfully funny, Frank. <laughs> Probably true, nevertheless. I think uh, I have an inkling, sir. Good. Go to it, Fraser. Uh, what about me, Captain Mannery? What can I do to help you in your oh. good work? Look, look after the horse or something. Oh, righto, sir. Well, what about me, sir? You'd better keep a tally of the sacks of grain. All right, sir. I'm up here on the platform ready to load the wheat into the opera, Captain Mannering. Good man, Jones. Oh, Colonel Mannering, are you managing all right? Yes, you won't be long now, Mrs. Prentice. Would... We'll have it running smooth as a sewing machine. Start the engine, Fraser. Right here, sir. Oh, let me see here. Ooh, it's a pretty sophisticated machine. Now... If I pull this lever here, press this button here, turn this handle, and give it a good kick here. Eh, uh, it's going. I've done it. Captain Manrin, that's a bit odd. What is, Jones? Well, the engine's going jatter, jatter, jatter. What of it? I wouldn't want you to think I was misleading you with the intention of forethought, sir. You see, I thought it would go puff, 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 puff. Go over the quiet, Jones. Start loading the stooks. Captain Manrin. Yes? I think I'll start loading the stooks. Oh. <laughs> Godfrey. Yes? Stand by the tubes to collect the grain and the sacks. Wilson, get ready to count the sacks. All right, sir. Uh, Captain Manrin, there's nothing coming through yet. Isn't there? Load away, Jones. I'm loaded as fast as I can. Pike, give Jones a hand. Yes, Miss Manning. There's still nothing coming through, Captain Manning. Maybe I've got some sort of constriction in my tubes. <laughs> Better come and have a look. <laughs> Keep loading, Jones. I am doing. Come on, Pike, you give us a hand. Right you are, Mr. Jones. Hey, hey, hey be careful. D don't stand too close to the edge of that hopper. Ah, oh, don't you worry about me, Pikey. I'm as sure-footed as a... Whoa! <laughs> Mr. Jones? Mr. Jones? Oh, dear. Oh, I've been sucked down the hopper. Whoa! Now, don't panic, Mr. Jones. I'll go and get some help. <laughs> Mr. Manning? Mr. Manning? What is it, Pike? I'm sorry to bother you, Captain Manning, but I think you ought to know that Corporal Jones has just fallen in the hopper. Good. The what? <laughs> Jones! Jones! Ooh. Fraser, stop the engine! Yeah, man, that's easier said than done. I'll do my best, though. I think you'd better come and have a look. Some of this straw's got buttons on. 
Oh, hey, and this bit's got braces on. Heavens above, it's Jones's trousers. Are you all right, Jones? Ooh. Wilson, climb up onto the platform and help me pull him out of the hopper. All right, sir. Ooh. Don't worry, Jones, it's going to be out of there. Ooh. Hodges, you don't seem to be doing anything useful. Come and help. Grab hold of Jones's other shoulder and pull. Right, certainly, certainly, Captain Manning. Only too willing to oblige. Right. Heave! Heave! Oh, that's sorry. All right, Jones. Yes, thank you, Mr. Manning. Oh, I'm so glad you're all right, Mr. Jones. Oh, Mr. Rogers, how can I ever thank you? I'll never forget what you've done for me. Don't mention it. It was a pleasure. Oh, Mr. Manning, he went judder, judder, judder and tore me trousers off, Mr. Manning. Yes, 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 we know that. Are you perfectly all right? Oh, Mr. Manning, I've lost that which I held most dear. Great Scott, Jones, you don't mean... Yes, Mr. Manning, my pocketbook with my discharge papers is gone from me. You see you, Mr. Jones, on the conveyor belt. You've only lost your trousers. Right, come on then. Let's get on with the harvest. Oh, I can't come out in front of Mrs. Prentice, not with no trousers. Oh. But Pike! Get the trousers off that scarecrow. Yes, Mr. Manry. Oh, I've had a terrible experience. Oh, never mind that. We've got to get on. Look lively, lads. We're holding up the harvest. Right, Fraser, stop the engine. Aye, aye, sir. This machine will never be the same again, Jones. Thanks to you. I don't think I'll ever be the same again. My bits and pieces have had a terrible shake-up. Here are the Scarecrow's trousers, Mr. Manry. Ah, oh, thank you. There you are, Jones. Put these on. I can't wear those. Oh, get on with it, Jones. He's not very sympathetic, is he? Frank, you'd better take Jones's place loading the sheaves into the hopper. Yes, Mr. Manry. Right, Hodges, get back to the horse and cart. Keep the wheat coming. Yes, Captain Manry. Get them wagons rolling, trail boss. Wagons roll! Be quiet, Mike. That's what Roy Rogers always says. Look, just, just load the hopper, you stupid boy. Wilson, keep your eye on the conveyor belt and check off the sacks of grain. All right, sir. Jones, yep. go and help Godfrey fill the sacks of grain. Just a minute. Where is Godfrey? He just popped off to give Mrs. Prentice a hand with her apple turnovers. Oh, what? Well, she's making a big one for our lunch. God, sick. There's more in young Godfrey than meets the eye. I bet he's after more than apple turnovers. Fraser, go and stoke a boiler. Aye, sir. Right, lads, set to work with Will. England needs this grain. No, Wilson, I shan't be sorry when we finish this. <laughs> Must be exhausting for you, shouting instructions all day long. <laughs> it's time we got back to our real job, the fighting jerry. Yes, of course, it's, sir. Right, men, put your backs into it. Keep that wheat coming. Come on now. Up. That's it, man. That's the lot. Switch off, Fraser. Well done, man. Colonel Mannering, thank you so much for all your work. It's been a pleasure, Mrs. Prentice. The vicar said he'd be coming over to bless the harvest. Oh, dear. <laughs> and then afterwards, I've got a nice harvest spread ready for you. Homemade pasties and potato wine. Oh, I, I don't think I should be having any potato wine. Oh, dear. Won't you, Charles? Why not? Oh, well, my sister Sissy uh, made some once and it had a rather unfortunate effect on me. What happened, Mr. Godfrey? Well... Apparently, I ran round the garden in my nightshirt, shouting, Long live Queen Victoria, and biting the heads off the chrysanthemums. <laughs> yeah. well, I don't think we want any of that sort of depravity here, Godfrey. You'd better stick to milk. I've saved some apple turnover for you, Charles. Oh, thank you, Edwin. Thank yes. you. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm sorry I'm late, but I've been having a bit of trouble with my bells. <laughs> Nothing serious, I hope, Vicar. No, one of them got badly twisted in the belfry. And, <laughs> and I had to get a man in. But they're all right now. Oh, I am very glad to hear it, Vicar. Well, Captain Manning, I see you've finished toiling in the field. We have indeed. I must say, well done. You and your men have done a really splendid job. You're a credit to the parish. Thank you, Vicar. One does one's best. Pro bono publico. 
For the, pub <clears throat> for the public good, you know. Yes, I do know what it means. <laughs> I gather Mr. Hodges here has been giving you a hand? Uh, yes, yes. We're all brothers under the skid, you know. We've buried our differences and pooled our resources for the good of the nation. In true Dunkirk spirit. Yes, Captain Manry is a wonderful man. And I'm looking forward to working with him again. Well, I'd only be too glad. Should the occasion ever arise in the future? But it has. It'll arise tomorrow. What? I promised Farmer, well beloved, that we'd all go over tomorrow and get his harvest in for him. <laughs> He's got a farm twice this size. You mean you went over my head? Behind my back? It doesn't really seem possible, does it, sir? Well, I thought you'd be pleased. Pleased? How dare you, Hodges. You've no right. This is typical of you. Interfering. Don't you talk to me like that, Captain Mannering. Uh, now, come now, gentlemen. You keep out of this, Pickle. Well, really. Hodges, you always did stick your nose in other people's business. Yeah, why don't you clear off? Yeah, hit the trail, buster. <laughs> you mind what you do with that gun, you young hooligan? I'm not an hooligan. You're an hooligan. Yes, you are. And why are we here? Yeah, don't we don't you the... push me, you old Scotch fool. Don't go near Scotch fool. I'll call you what I like, mate. Gentlemen, oh, gentlemen, oh, please. Remember, in the eyes of God, we are all brothers. He's no brother of mine. He's a troublemaker and always has been. Why, well, you silly old dodder, are you? Gentlemen, gentlemen, have you forgotten the Dunkirk spirit? Damn the Dunkirk spirit. Let me get my hands on that man. Here, don't you stop the Every episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft. You heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John the Major as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Lorry, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Levin, the Private Pike, Bill Pertry, ARP Warden, Frank Williams, the Vicar, and Nan Kenway as Mrs. Prentice. All is safely gathered in, was adapted for radio by Michael Knowles and Harold Snowd, and produced by John Dias.